It's a scene that's become all too familiar in the South China Sea, a confrontation between the Chinese Coast Guard and Filipino vessels. This is video of the most recent incident, which happened on April 30th. A pair of Chinese Coast Guard ships used water cannons to douse Filipino vessels that were reportedly en route to the Scarborough Shoal to help some fishermen. At least that's how the Philippines government described the incident in its official protest of what is now the 20th such encounter between the two nations just this year. The Chinese government also released footage of the encounter, but said the water cannons were used lawfully to protect Chinese interests in the area. Both the Philippines and China accused the other of escalating tensions in the region, and the April 30th incident also happened while the Philippines and the United States were taking part in the annual Balikatan military drills. Balikatan means shoulder to shoulder, and this year's event marks the largest ever, with more than 17,000 soldiers taking part. So why is there so much attention on the South China Sea, and why do some military and geopolitical analysts think the tensions here are more likely to spark a conflict between the United States and China than a possible Chinese takeover of Taiwan? Well, it's a multifaceted issue, but let's see if we can't break it down just a bit. First, let's go ahead and get a lay of the land. Uh, here is the South China Sea right here, and I want to highlight a region, uh, Manila, uh, called the Scarborough Shoal which uh, occupies about that area here. Uh, this is the site of the most recent run-in uh, between China and the Philippines that happened on the 30th. I also wanna highlight a couple other locations real quick. The first is a grouping of uh, some islands, some sandbars, it's called the Spratleys, and it's about in this area right about here. And included within the Spratleys is an area called the Second Thomas Shoal which is uh, about, about right there. So we have the Scarborough, we have the Spratleys, Second Thomas Shoal, okay? Now, all of these locations are within these fishing grounds that have historically been accessed by most of the countries in this region. Uh, we have China that accesses these grounds, Philippines, obviously, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Vietnam. Um, they, all, they all access these grounds and have for centuries. They are very fertile fishing grounds and supply a lot of the food for people living in this region of the world. But you will also notice that these areas are within uh, these boundaries here, these black lines that you can see on the map. These black lines signify the exclusive economic zones, or EEZs, for each country. Now, the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea defines an EEZ as an area that extends out from a country's coastal territory into the sea. You can see that extension here, uh, but by no more than about 200 nautical miles. Uh, a country has pretty much sole authority to permit or prohibit any sort of economic activity within their EEZ. Usually that's how it works. Uh, in this area of the world, there's been no official ruling on whose sovereign territory uh, any of this fishing ground belongs to or the islands that are within these fishing grounds. Um, no, no official ruling on who it belongs to, but the permanent court of arbitration ruled in 2016 that China definitely does not own it. So. Uh, that isn't stopping Chinese vessels, however, from implementing some blockades in this region from time to time. And essentially, uh, the Chinese have controlled access to the Scarborough Shoal since about 2012. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party, under the rule of Xi Jinping, maintains they're just looking out for their own best interests and protecting their territory from what it views as a hostile expansion of U.S. interests. On the other side of that pendulum swing are the China Hawks who say that the real aim of Xi's regime is to establish military footholds in this region and potentially control some of these trade routes that go through here. These are some of the most lucrative trade routes in the world. More than three trillion, with a T, three trillion dollars worth of goods sail on these seas every year. Now, remember these islands down here, the Spratleys? 
Over the course of the last few years, the Chinese government has invested billions to build up what were essentially exposed outcroppings of coral reef into full-fledged military facilities with runways and barracks. China is not alone in adding more military resources to this region of the South China Sea. In addition to upping its naval patrols, the Philippines also sought to further its claims to the area by purposefully running a ship aground in the Second Thomas Shoal. That ship is now used as a permanent military installation by the Philippines. That means regular resupply missions, and those are another point of contention for the Chinese and often another source of conflict. While all of this is going on, the Philippines continues to strengthen its military ties to the United States, which is a, uh, a similar pattern that we're seeing throughout the Pacific. Japan and Australia also entered into historical military partnerships with the United States recently over fears that China may try to take control over land that isn't theirs. Uh, even India, way over here is focused uh, more on this region uh, than they have in years past. India doesn't want China to take over the South China Sea any more than anybody else does, which is why it recently sold the Philippines some BrahMos missile batteries, because again, when $3 trillion worth of trade could be on the line here, that demands international attention. Ryan Robertson, Straight Arrow News.